Welcome collectors. Today I'm introducing you to my exceptionally intriguing neighbor, Jim. Jim, he's lived across the road from me for almost eight years and in that time I've come to know him quite well in his collection of dinky toys, corgi, and all sorts of really interesting cars which I'm going to show you today. A collection that has surpassed probably five, six decades easily. Some of these cars are the most rare cars you'll ever set your eyes on in absolutely pristine condition and I'd like to introduce Jim today. Say hi to everyone, Jim. Hi. Alright Jim, so tell me a little bit about your collection. When did you start collecting? Um, well, I've been here well, actually about uh, 60 odd years ago I started. So you were born in 1924? Yes. Did you collect toys right from a child or? No. No? Um, I, um, I, I, my dad used to buy me toys for Christmas, like tin toys, old, mostly tin toys, and you know. That's what was available at the time. Yeah, so yeah. try it. Yeah. Pressed tin, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Dinky came out probably around, what, 1930, 40? Yeah, so? it's around there, I'd yeah. say. Yeah. And a lot of your collection is Dinky, as we're going to look at. He's got a lot of really interesting Dinky toys, military vehicles. Has the infection to collect spread to yeah. your children? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so how many vehicles do you figure you have here? Oh, I haven't got a clue, sorry. <laughs> looks like looks like probably at least a thousand or so to me. Yeah. How long have you had your basement set up like this? Um, <clears throat> since 19, about 1950, 55. 1955. And you've lived in this house for since? Yeah, since we came in 1955. 1955, yeah. Yeah. So decades of collecting and... I mean, this is pretty much the same way I would I oh, would yeah. collect my yeah. cars and display them, and yeah. it's absolutely phenomenal to have you across the road from me and to have gotten to know you so Thank well. Thank you. Yeah. So, Jim, in all these years of collecting, tell me a little bit about yourself and your career, your accomplishments, what you've seen through these decades. Well, I was in the Second World War for four and a half years, and... Uh, I, I actually served in the North Atlantic, of course, and uh, also in the Pacific, um, right up until Japan. We were attacking Japan, um, and we were part of the American fleet then, and we fought our way all the way up from the Pacific all the way up right to Japan. Eventually, we were attacking Japan. Wow. And uh, I was on a carrier, my second ship. My first ship was a destroyer. My second ship was an aircraft carrier called HMS Implacable. Implacable? Implacable. Oh, wow. Which is actually from a, 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 a French ship that the British captured when the French and the British used to fight a long time ago, hundreds of years ago. And uh, that's why I got the name Implacable. Wow. Which means it's like immovable. It's, it's like a wall. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a rock. It's a, a rock in the yeah. ocean. Yeah. Wow. And, and how many people would have served on that ship? Um, about 800. That's a big size ship for back in those oh, days. Oh yeah, so we, uh, oh yeah. Well, was it an aircraft carrier? And yes, all the it was yeah. a carrier. Yeah. Yeah, we served, uh, as I said, um, in the North Atlantic. Um, we attacked Germany, uh, parts of Norway. Um, then we moved, we they moved us to the Pacific. So we went all the way through the Pacific, all up through the islands eventually. Finished up attacking Japan itself. Wow. Mm. So some significant oh, yeah. battle. Oh yeah. Any any real scares? I mean, you were on a very large ship, but well, yeah, well, yes. We the biggest trouble we had was, of course, with the kamikaze planes. Like they come from nowhere. Yeah. And the closest we had is that it had been very very quiet for about three weeks. Now Skipper decided on that Sunday that he would have a church service loads off duty on the deck. So we got up there, we just got up there and all hell broke loose because where they came from I don't know. What they did they flew just above the ocean so our radar system didn't pick them up until right. it was too late. They were they were they were hitting us then. So we were very fortunate. Oh we and they we had armored decks. We were the ship. first carriers that had armored decks. Wow. So and my our sister ship got hit. She was on fire and uh, but she survived because we had these armored decks. And that was new. The American aircraft carriers didn't have armored decks. That's why they burned them. They just yeah. had wooden decks. 
Yeah. And then after the war, you drove truck, right? Or yes, I did. Yeah. So yeah. how old would you have been after the war, roughly? That would have been about, you've been about 20 years old? Yes. Right? Yeah. So then yeah. you went to driving truck in Canada, right? Yes, I did. Because you're originally from Great Britain. Yes, I am. Excellent, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so driving, tell me a little bit about driving truck in Canada. I used, to, I used to do mostly the mines. Here in town, we used to make a lot of mining equipment. So we used to carry a lot of that stuff. And uh, we used to do all the mines up north. Um, and I did that for a few years, till eventually I uh, decided to start my own business. So I opened my own store. And what I opened was a surplus store, which I had for 40, over 40 years on the main street. We sold everything, literally. Yeah. Yeah. And that was around the time that you started collecting. No, I collected too much before that. Before that, yeah. like so, in, during the war time, you wouldn't have collected. You've been waiting. No, there busy. was no toys in the war. There no, no toys during Nothing the war. at all. All went into the war. I so right? it was probably uh, how long after the war did you start collecting? Uh, well, some are pre-war. Uh, not many, but there's a few. But um, I used to go to markets because often these guys would sell them, or they'd sell them out the trunk of their car. Um, they'd get together and they, that's yeah. what they do. So I don't like buy them from there. Yeah. I, I, bought, I bought them from wherever I found them, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. Mm. So uh, I think we're going to take a look at this massive, amazing historical collection of gyms. <laughs> and we're going to hear a little bit more about some of these incredible pieces. Look at this incredible collection. Before we get into the main passion of Jim's, which is his military collection, let's take a quick survey of the room. All the incredible pieces that he has, many of which we are going to discuss in detail, including an extremely rare Elvis Thunderbird. Elvis Presley. Elvis yeah. Presley Thunderbird and a Batmobile from Corgi, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. A lot of amazing trucks. Many of these trucks Jim actually drove for a time as a truck driver back in the 1940s and 50s. The collection is endless. We've got caravans, die-cast figures, die-cast motorcycles, impossible to find collectibles nowadays, priceless really, and in condition that only a true collector could have maintained over the past 60 years. Some of these vehicles and die casts are still in their original packaging with price tags on them from years and years ago. I can't even get all the collection in one video, so we'll have to split this up. But here is his pride and joy. Jim, why don't you show me a little bit of your military die cast collection? Well, let's go from top to bottom. We've got this piece here. Short range That's missile steam, launcher. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's called a road roller in England, of course. Yeah. And they were steam driven. And how old would that piece be, approximately? I mean, it's uh, solid metal. It's probably got to be about one forty third scale. I think these were made um, just bef before the war. Wow. And they still made them a little after the war. Yeah. Yeah, and then a lot of them went into die cast rather than tin. This is tin. That's tin. Okay. Yeah. And then this is quite the uh, unique piece as well. What have we got here? That is an American um, Second World War military vehicle. That's what that is. Rex Toys. Never even mm. heard of it. Yeah. But a really solid, well-built, heavy piece. Yeah. And we've got some... Uh, what are these? These are so old. They're Jeeps. Jeeps made by Dinky. Yeah. 164 scale Dinky Jeeps. Yeah. I have not seen 164 scale Dinky before. This is incredible. Yeah. Never seen this before. Normally Dinky is uh, like more this scale here, this Jeep. I believe that would be a Dinky, wouldn't it not, Jim? Or who made that one? Dinky. Yeah. Yeah, it is Dinky. US Jeep. It's got a turret on the couple turrets. That's more of a typical size for Dinky, I believe. Yeah, some of the various uh, various ages, yeah. of course. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, look at this one here. Solid metal box on the back. Yeah, that's that was actually that's Second World War actually. Wow. 
That's the ammo. That's the most military, military ammo. Military ammo. Number 626. Made in England. Yeah. Opening. Look, it's even got hinges on the back. You could yeah. probably open those doors up, couldn't you, yeah. Jim? Wow, this is really quite the collection of vehicles that we have here. Looks like an old Corgi right there. Yes, it is. I think. No, it's a dinky. Is wow. it dinky? Yeah. Okay. Corgi, Corgi definitely took this. Uh, well, this, Corgi was a different piece. company. Yeah. yeah, but sometimes when companies kind of uh, cross paths, they would take. Yeah. Take That's a cast. Land Rover. They call it. Land Rover. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a few other uh, very interesting vehicles over here. What's this one here? That is a stalwart dinky. Wow! Look, it's even got the piece on the front so it can ford yeah. rivers and not get stuck on the on the banks. These I used to drive one of these. You drove the Navy, one of those. Yeah, in the Navy. I... That's for fording onto beaches. That's right. You drove one of those. Yeah. Wow. These were made actually. The original vehicles were made by the um, by the Americans in the Second World War. It's a, it was actually made for their landings. This. Yeah. Yeah. So. Normandy Beach and whatnot type. Well, most of it in the Pacific. Okay. Uh, all the islands were the American cheese us. And who makes that particular diecast toy? Mm, yeah. Is that uh, is that a dinky or? Let's have a look at it. Yep. Dinky. That's a dinky. Wow. Yeah. Oh, look, we've got a Volkswagen bus over here. Is that a Volkswagen? <laughs> no, it's not a Volkswagen. It's probably a Russian bus of some kind. That's a comma I've made in England. Wow. Comma. Corgi, made by Corgi, too. Yeah. But the vehicle is a comma, it's called a comma. And does it have opening parts? It looks like the back might do something. Yeah. I know, it's hard to say. It's a separate piece anyways. Yep. Well, this is quite the amazing collection. This is an extremely cool piece right here. That's a, an RAF. What is an RAF? Um, fueler. A fueling truck. For fueling the planes. Yeah. Wow. This thing weighs about three pounds. <laughs> Look, it's even got a driver in the front seat. Extremely detailed too. The driver has yeah. got a painted face. The tires are all tight to the rims. Extremely hard to find. You'd never find something like that for sale nowadays. You don't see them anymore no. now, do you? No, you no. wouldn't. Not without, and if you do, no. the price would be through the moon. Look at this thing. That this is an extremely valuable piece here. So hard to come by with the tank, the trailer. Can you show us that tank, Jim, on the back of this truck here? What have yeah, we got here? You've even got your own notes. Yeah. What have we got here? With the tracks, no less. So often... This is a Centurion tank. Centurion tank. This is uh, British. Hmm. Yeah. And just turn it over so we can see the bottom of it. It still has the original tracks on it, no less. Yeah. Impossible. Because normally these tracks... I yes, wouldn't even do. want to try and put those back on the wheels because they've just kind of taken the shape where yeah. they are. And that's, you've got a note here too. Let's see if we can put that on the camera. What does it say? A Thorny Mighty Antar. This is a Mighty Antar. This is a Mighty Father British Army. It will carry two tanks. Two tanks? Two tanks. Um, a Churchill tank weighed about uh, over 65 tons. These will carry two of those. Down in Salisbury Plain, after the war, there were thousands of them there. That's where they stored them, after the war. And a lot of them, funny enough, um, the British gave um, to Egypt, and they, and they said they were going to make them, use them as vehicles, but they didn't. They put guns back on them. <laughs> now, also, when you were on that, that ship... During the war, did they end up dumping tanks off the side of the, uh, you know, as uh, was we, pretty we common? dumped a lot of aircraft. Dumped a lot of aircraft, eh? Yeah. But you dumped a lot of Towards helicopters. The end of the war. You probably dumped yeah. a few helicopters too, eh? Well, the Americans, we had a lot of American aircraft, um, and they didn't want them back, so we, um, they told us to dump them in yeah. the sea, and that's what we did. Incredible. Yeah. What have we got here? These ones have a whole bunch of details on them. That's a German. 
Those are German, eh? Yeah, this is German. And who makes those? Are they yeah. dinky or? I have a made in Germany. I, uh... If I may? Yeah. A lot of these were made by Mercedes Benz. This one's got a trailer attached yeah. to it, so I don't want to tilt it. A lot of these were made by Mercedes Benz. Corgi yeah, toys. Yeah. Semi truck rocket launcher. Check out this thing. It's got they a trailer off the side, on the back. side. Wow. Mm. Unbelievable. And you've got two of them. One's got replacement tracks, apparently. We've got a motorcycle here, too. Look That's at a this. German motorcycle. Look at That's this. a BMW. Because Jim does know his motorcycles. You didn't mention mm. that in our interview. How many motorcycles did you own at the highlight of your motorcycle collection, Jim? Oh, I have no idea. Come on, you've told me before. It was about 70, wasn't it? 70 some Maybe motorcycles? And did you not uh, tell me that you... When was when did you stop riding motorcycles, Jim? How, how well, old were you? I haven't really. Haven't really stopped? Never rode for years. No? And you still got one in the shed? Yes. What have, got got in the sh what have you got in the shed? Uh, it's a 350. It's um, it's a BSA. Good bike. Yeah, it's still sitting. No, I rode motorcycles for years. I remember you telling me, uh, maybe it was about a year or two yeah. ago, that you uh, stopped riding your motorcycles officially uh, at about <laughs> 85, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe a little bit later than that. You're still driving the Buick Regal all over the place. Yeah. Can't keep you still. Now these are interesting. Here, what is this here? That's and a that's, that one. Yeah, these are these are, are the same. These are armored vehicles. Um, Got two tanks in your hand. This is called a striker. A striker. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, is that ever heavy? That's like a massive paperweight. Mm. Made by Dinky Striker. Hmm. I've never seen anything like this before. Not in all my days on eBay, YouTube. Never seen anything quite like Jim's collection of military vehicles. It's absolutely out of this world. Look at this thing. It's just such a, a privilege to be here to just look and talk about these vehicles with Jim. All his military knowledge as well to support what he's collected for all of these years. He's wrong with car. That's what the British used in the North African desert. Really? In the North yeah. African? Why? And why did they use such a, a vehicle? Uh, they were built for the, for, um, it was built by the Daimler company, which is a very, it's like the Rolls Royce of cars in yeah. there. It's the Daimler. Oh, that was like, the original was the German. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I've got a few of those in Matchbox, but nothing. Have you? I yeah. Think, oh, I think your tank goes on the truck over here, because... This one? No, this one with the tread coming okay. off. I think it goes over here. Yeah. There you go. That's where it belongs, yep. Put this one back where it belongs. We hoard a lot of those. I, I told her, they, I, after the war, why, I don't know, but they uh, they gave this a lot to Egypt. And they, they, they gave them to them as vehicles. What they did, they rearmed them and put the guns back on them. Yeah. The Egyptians. And they're still doing that today, uh, maybe not necessarily yeah. Egypt, but with like AK-47s. This is a Volkswagen thing right here. Yes, they uh, pulling. And some of them, and when I was sitting, when we were in uh, the Middle East during the war, yeah, the, the Germans put a machine gun on top of these. Wow, and a the Volkswagen. Would stand up and fire it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yeah, they were Volkswagen. And you've got some rockets with this truck. Yeah, it's a rocket launcher from here. Wow. Did we already look at this one? Because it's incredible too. Big, heavy truck, also pulling a gun. You've got so many guns being pulled by trucks. Yeah. Well, truly an epic, epic collection of vehicles, Jim. Absolutely epic. I'm pretty sure that nobody has seen a collection like this on YouTube or anywhere. Certainly I haven't, even in all my years of collecting cars. And that's only one cabinet, boys and girls. This man has a legendary collection yeah, we got throughout his house. 